Welcome to part one of my Premiere Pro Toolbar Explainer Series. In this episode, I'm gonna be teaching you all there is to know about selecting clips in Premiere Pro. And that means the selection tool and the track select forward and track select backwards tool, along with some other things that you may not know about. If that's what you came here for and you're new, my name's Javier Mercedes. I do video tech tutorials and gear reviews on this channel. If you're into that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the like, let's get right into it. For those of you that are new to Premiere Pro, I'm gonna start with some basics and then move into some more intermediate expert stuff. So hopefully there's some tips in here for everyone. The tool that you're going to use the most in Premiere Pro is right here, the selection tool. If at any time you're using any other tool here on the toolbar, all you have to do is hit V on your keyboard and that will bring back up your selection tool. With the selection tool, when your mouse comes in proximity of an edge of a clip on the timeline, it will switch over to this red bracket with an arrow in it. With this, you can shorten or lengthen your clip. And notice the numbers down here. It's telling you exactly how many seconds and frames you're shortening the clip and the exact duration that the clip will end up being. While your mouse is at the end of a clip like this, there's a lot more that you can actually do if you were to hit a modifier key. So on Windows, that would be Control, and on Mac, that would be Command. So right now I'm holding Command, and that's modified my selection tool to now turn into the ripple edit tool. If you line up the cursor exactly on the edge, it will then turn into the rolling edit tool. Both the rolling and ripple edit tool I'm going to cover extensively in the second episode of this series, but for right now, I just wanted to make you aware that that modifier was there. With the selection tool, you can click and highlight clips, you can click and drag and highlight a whole bunch of clips, and then with this link selection icon on or highlighted blue, it will always highlight both the video and linked audio at the same time. If you are new to Premiere Pro, one concept that will help you out so much is understanding how clips are linked on the timeline. You can tell that this video and audio are paired with each other because of this little V in these brackets right here. If I were to click this clip, then it highlights both the video and audio. Now, if I were to right click and go to unlink, now I have separated my video from my audio and I can move them around however I want to. If I want to pair them back with each other, all I have to do is highlight the video and audio clip. You can highlight more than one clip at a time by clicking and dragging or holding shift while you click. Now, if I were to right click, hit link, notice how these are out of sync now. So if I were to go to this little red mark and right click and say, move into sync, now they're properly synced again. One more point to bring up with this is if you were to double click on any clip in the project bin, that will bring up your source monitor. At the bottom of this window, you'll see a little film and audio waveform icon. If you click and drag the film icon onto the timeline, you'll only bring in the video portion of the clip onto your timeline. Same goes for if you click and drag from that audio waveform icon onto the timeline, it only brings over the audio portion from that clip. Understanding the basics of how clips interact when they are linked and unlinked on the timeline is the basis of how the selection tool works. For example, if you want to highlight just the audio or just the video portion of a clip while the link selection icon is turned on, all you have to do is hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and click whatever part of the clip you want to. If you wanted the ability to work in the timeline without any linked selections, all you would have to do is turn off the link selection icon. Now both the video and audio portions of clips act separate, so you can highlight whatever you want. When you go to turn the link selection icon back on, everything is still linked on your timeline. Now let me show you all the cool things you can do by mixing modifier keys with the selection tool. You can always duplicate any clip on the timeline by clicking it and holding option while you drag it. As you can see here, as I've duplicated the same clip many times. Let's say I wanna get those two purple clips in between this section of green clips over here. Now what you might do is break them apart and then move the clips over and then delete the space in between. But what if I told you there was a faster way to do this? Highlight the two purple clips, click and drag, and while you're dragging, hold command, and then drop the clips into place. See how we did all of those actions in one fell swoop? Now where this gets even more interesting is if you wanted to do that same action, but also close the gap between this group of green clips over here. Highlight the two purple clips and not only hold command while you're dragging, but option. That gives you this arrow looking icon thingy and we're gonna drop it into the same spot. And there you have it. We have closed the gap between where you took the clip from and then also inserted the clip between these two green clips. And how about that amazing freeze frame up top? You can use this same technique to move multiple clips on multiple tracks. 
Here I'm dragging and holding command and option at the same time. It inserts my highlighted clips where I want them and then also shoves the clips that were there forward into their respective spots. And again, even our freeze frame is really surprised at how awesome this technique is. Let's move on to the track select forward tool. When looking at the cursors in the toolbar, if you see any icons with this little chick mark or this triangle in the right hand corner, that means there's more tools available to you if you were to click and hold the mouse on that tool. Hovering over the track select forward tool, I can tell that the hotkey for this is A. After hitting A, we get these two little arrows. And what this tool does is select all of the footage in front of those two arrows. Now notice my audio clip all the way down below. When using this cursor, it also selects that clip because part of that audio clip is past those two arrows. Let me zoom out and show you that this is moving every single clip that's past those two arrows, which is very beneficial when you need to fit in a clip in between something within your storyline. Move that whole storyline down the timeline just a little bit and then just insert that clip. Now let's take this a step further. If you were to hold shift while you use the track select forward tool, it will only select a specific track. Now remember, if we have linked selection on, that means it's also going to select the associated linked audio and video tracks at the same time. If you just want to select video or audio when link selection is on, all you have to do is hold shift and option at the same time, and then you can get those specific tracks. All of these same features are available to you with the track select backwards tool, which you can bring up with a hotkey by hitting shift A. Let me give you two more quick tips. If you click and highlight a set amount of clips and you hit the question mark key, this brings up your in and out points. The in point bracket will start at the beginning of the furthest left clip and your out point bracket will go to the end of the clip that's furthest to the right. Where this is beneficial though is it tells you exactly the duration from in to out point right here on this time code in the program monitor. If I were to select some more clips and hit the question mark, I know for a fact that what I've selected is one minute, four seconds and 15 frames long. To get rid of the brackets, just hit Option X or Alt X on Windows. One last tip for selecting clips is if you've ever noticed when you've clicked the color workspace, as you move your playhead, the selection underneath the playhead keeps highlighting the clips directly underneath the playhead. If you go up to sequence, you'll find that the name of this is called Selection Follows Playhead. If you uncheck this, as you move your playhead, it will stop highlighting the clips underneath the playhead. I've actually mapped this to a keyboard shortcut because I am constantly switching this on and off. Don't forget to give me a like on the video if it was valuable. And if you want to continue learning in this series, right here is me explaining all there is to know about the rolling edit, ripple edit, and rate stretch tool in Premiere Pro, or you could click on another video in the series right there. Till next time, hope you guys are out there living a life of abundance and go ahead and click one of those videos.